Good evening. <laughs> I hope your week is well. And um, I'm much better than last week because I had to um, cancel it. I don't know what I ate, but whatever it was, my body wasn't very happy. <laughs> but I am here this evening to be with you. And I have a special topic to discuss with you. I will look and see how everyone's here. Hi, Lisa. Erica and Burpee, hi. How are you doing? Isabel? <laughs> Tony? Yeah, I'm feeling much better. Thank you, Tony. Lori? Donald? I hope you're healing well from your operation. Hi, Myra. Thank you. I love being with all of you guys, too. Danny with us tonight and Stephen. Donald again. <laughs> Yvonne, hi, how you doing? Erica. Ooh, a special topic, yes. <laughs> so, I think enough people are here for us to begin. Well, um, over all of my lives and my color of thought um, sessions and most of my posts and my art classes focus on the importance of the balance between the feminine principle and the masculine principle with spirit. And up to now we've talked about how um, the feminine principle is the link to the higher consciousness and the, femin the masculine principle catches it and brings it into form. Now, we all know that um, there isn't much harmony out there right now. Hi, Juliet. Glad you're here. Um, and I think I might have something that might um, help. In Color of Thought last two sessions ago, I believe, we talked about red. And red is the color of the base center. It's also to do with our passion. And Lily was told when she first began in her healing journey that if you didn't have much passion, you wouldn't necessarily become a good healer or a great musician or great artist, or in her case, she wanted to be an opera singer. And the reason why I bring this up is that the two centers of our body, the base center and the sacral center, is important for us to have as in harmony with all the other centers. Our intention of how we use it is important. And you know, we don't have a really good story about that. It's either lustful or you, um, it's naughty you feel guilty um, and I find in a lot of spiritual paths they encourage um, no sexual um, experiences. Now I can understand why they might do that because ultimately the the 
sexual energy that we have, which is a creative force, needs to be directed properly in order to obtain consciousness. And in um, the Cathars teachings, it's like the bridal chamber, those two centers. And look at what we have. We have a really bad press about it. We don't know how to use it for the highest. We don't even know how to use it without guilt or just hurting ourselves. So it's, it's it, I think one of the major things that we have to learn is how to acknowledge how wonderful that energy is of those two centers and then learn to take it up. In our last um, Color of Thought, which is on YouTube replays, um, we talked about the, how to do this, where we have, as I said, the base center, the sacral center, the solar plexus, the heart center, throat center, the third eye, Ajna center, and the crown. Now, what I was taught within the healing method was you take your heart center and visualize it's on your shoulder and your throat center is on the other shoulder and then it's your head centers. And that's a triangle. It's like the doorway of perception that we practice going out through that seeing and then coming back in to your whole body. What's important when you're inside your body is to have a whole unity of the flow of energy that unites the heaven above you going through your crown center, brow center, throat center, heart, solar plexus, sacral, and your base down through your feet to earth. So can you imagine how do you have harmony inside if there's a um, psychological block there for whatever reason? So it seems to me that it'd be really important to um, work with that. in order to have inner harmony. And then maybe our outward relationships might be different. And the world relationships might be different if we came at it as um, whole harmonized beings. And a lot of people, I know a lot of people can't talk about this because of the program of it being wrong or distraction. But it's a creative force, you know? So I am going to check out your messages, see who else has arrived. I've got Karen, hi, and Vince, how you doing? 67 degrees in where you live. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Let me go down further. So does anyone, excuse my nose. Hi, Lily, <laughs> morning angel. Does anyone have any comments about that subject? I um, will wait and see what you might be saying. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Erica says that it's interesting about the triangle. I learned in an art history class that often subjects are placed in a triangle to create movement or even a storyline within the piece. 
triangles seem to be significant for lots of things. Yep. It's the balance. There's many different triangles. <laughs> Makes sense to Vince. We need to do it though. You know that our thoughts, our desires, our hurts and all that, they um, sort of collect in the lower triad, which is your base sacral and the solar plexus. But we put it away because of our um, indoctrination in many cases. And in one of the spiritual paths that I was graced to be near, um, I don't think they brought that into attention enough. Based on the fact of what our cultural imprint is. And that's why I want to bring it out. Talk about it. I mean, we do have to be careful because if you are um, not evolved enough, it can go a bit crazy. We like to go crazy at times. <laughs> I think we, there is a deep, deep need to love and skip and sing and dance and be happy. But we've put it outside of ourselves, you know, it's, we have to come in and be more who we were born to be. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite subjects, I have to say. <laughs> Donald Matthew is here with me in the UK. Yes, he's in the other room being very quiet <laughs> while I am talking to you. And last night, I was very quiet when he was live. <laughs> Karen thinks that it, it seems like it's something different to men than to women. And Juliet says, I've been listening intently and this makes so much sense to me. Is it a case of loving oneself and being at peace with oneself before we can attract love and harmony? I'm one who has always worn my heart on my sleeve. Well, to answer your um, question or thought, Karen, it is different. But this, um, Mrs. Tweedy used to give different practices to the men to achieve this triangle of harmony than to women. And the reason being is that the um, life force within a man is to procreate, to um, help the creation of a, a child, a baby, so humanity can continue. So he needs to learn to cope with this force that's driving him forward to release it. And um, what helps with that to go inwards means that he's working with his feminine principle to do that. And again, there's a limitation about that. There's let's go forth and release it. And they've, the masculine principle has dominated. And it's time that we're being called to balance that. So the force that a man has within him, testosterone, how it drives them to want to unite with a woman, generally, needs a different focus of how to work with that. As the woman has to work with her 
masculine principle. But first, she's got to have the courage to let go of hurt, to forgive, to admit to the energy, the creative force that she has within her sacral and base centers. This um, is called the bridal chamber in many teachings. And we're the guardian of that, the, the whim, the gender, the woman is her body is the guardian of that. And to create a um, special experience, which I don't know how many people have really experienced this yet within our cultures, is that wonderful marriage of a man and a woman of the when the the special force of love and wanting to unite enters the woman and they dissolve into the consciousness of the two they meet each other ideally this is what i feel is our next step why all of this focus on the woman and all these events that have risen because we know that that has to come into balance again in and our society our the world is not in balance in regards to the masculine the feminine principle with the higher spirit otherwise we would have created something entirely different now here that serves us that raises our potential in some ways I just wonder sometimes is heaven actually here and we're not using it we've put it up there in the sky huh. anyway let's see I could go on for a long time chatting. So Juliet. Loving oneself is very important. But understanding what is loving of oneself. And it comes again to this balance of the inner energies with the visible aspect of who we are and the invisible of what we are. And I know that my dream, my next dream, my next partner, if I'm graced to have one, is to reach that with that person. And that we are consciously working on it together and value it. So, Juliet, wearing your heart on your sleeve, let's hope that um, you could put a coat over it sometimes until you are totally balanced in one. Um, just my thought. <laughs> Lily, that makes me a bit crazy. I'm trying. What do you mean by it? What makes you a bit crazy, Lily? Isabel says, the famous business author, Napoleon Hill, talked about the transmutation of sexual energy in creative energy, and it was in the 1930s. He was ahead of his time. Interesting, because the, the 30s was an interesting time for the opening of many doorways, amazing, loads of people, philosophers and things that were chatting about this. And then look at how many decades have gone by and we're in another cycle of advancement, of contemplation. He probably planted seeds that could grow and the water's been being put on it and yeah. We're still a little sprout, I think. And there's so much wonderful beauty for us to experience. 
together within that we haven't done yet. Kevin says, Matthew rocked the house last night with that new tune. I totally agree. That last tune, amazing. It even amazed him. <laughs> he was, he's going to work on it some more so we can all hear it. It's just, I don't think there was even a name. There was Stepping Stones was before it. And the next one was absolutely amazing. Hi, Angela. Glad you could make it. Richard Hall. Sorry, he's late too. I'm glad you're here. Great, Don. You're right. I am happy that Matthew's here. And um, I can do streaming. And he, he's not bothered. He doesn't think I'm not giving him enough attention, which is really super to have someone that's um, working in a similar way. Well, actually, he's the one that got me doing this. So, <laughs> ah, Lily's answered. She says she's trying to find peace in this new home. I know what it's like every time you change homes. When I'm leaving a home, I was guided to say thank you to all the things that I left behind and treasure the things that I was putting in a new home. And I do that every time. And it's, it's like to thank everything for helping to create the beauty that I'm going to live in. And it um, works most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Stefan said, do we know of any cultures, the world where the balance is right between the masculine and the feminine? Stefan, it's like we're in a cycle. It keep every time that we're in a new phase, a new cycle, these relationships change and it begins inside with our invisible realms, the higher realms, coming through the feminine principle into the masculine, creating a form or having this triangle of balance. I don't know whether in the past or presently if there's any cultures that work with that I tend to think that it's it's a new variation on a theme that we're working on right now to bring harmony on the planet and every one of us can help with that and then I've said this before but I think COVID in a way has helped us because we have to be inward inside we have to be with ourselves and work with it, transmute our upset, our panic, or find peace within the situation, within the fact that we, in a lot of ways, can't control it. But can you really control the thoughts that are in our mind generally? It's an amazing playground of opportunity, I think. Not to say that I don't have my moments. <laughs> Yeah. Verpi says, I think there are two types of sexual energy in the world, or many more types, but roughly said two types. The other type of that energy is when people really connect also on the mind and soul and heart level. Yes, it's true. And then, she says more, hang on a minute. whatever people want to call it. And the other type is animal instinct that people, hang on, have, and it can become a destructive force if not controlled. 
Knowing can harm others with that. I mean all kinds of sexual abuse, but also meaningless sex. Of course, that animal instinct isn't always a bad thing, but it needs to be controlled so that no one gets hurt. Well, fortunately, we're not just animals anymore. We are a human being that has the ability to have consciousness. We have the ability to, to control our will. And the animal nature within us, the fear and fright and let's get out of here or let's just do what I want, the reptilian animalistic aspect, doesn't need to control us. We have a mind, we have a heart. And right now, the step of the evolution of consciousness is to work with that. And there's a, a, a treasure, the animal instinct. With us, we can appreciate hugging and coming close. And, and yes, there are destructive aspects in our nature but we can be the controllers. We don't have to be the victim even to our own animal nature. And it's, we're being called to awaken, to take control, take responsibility. It's all there for us to do. And some people don't believe it. Some people judge themselves, judge others, judge the world. And so they're not the controllers. They're letting that part of your nature to control you. And you miss out on a lot of happiness because of it. <laughs> Angela, you're a very good friend for Juliet. I know this is my favorite. Got it in California a long time ago. And I just found it again. And I have been wearing it every day <laughs> for the last three days. <laughs> Lily's trying to create. <laughs> Juliet says that it's good advice that she's trying to come to learn to not expose my heart too soon. It will take a special lovely man, calm togetherness and loving bond with a sprinkling of excitement and adventure. <laughs> yep, that means you have to value your heart um, in a different way. And we all have to value our hearts and use it for the highest intention of what life can be. Isn't it wonderful to be able to feel that radiance? I mean, it's, we might need, people with big hearts might need to um, have a, I had to learn to have a dimmer switch, but within the dimmer switch, I still um, had that fullness of energy inside it and I didn't need to visibly show it as much because I was probably wanting to be accepted quite a lot. And I still love to share and be with people and talk well when we can. Um, I suppose my artwork allows me the freedom to put everything there without um, having to um, answer to anybody. Angela Fender gave him that guitar. It's a beautiful guitar.
Lily, I'm here to help, but it's more to direct you to find how you help yourself. And there are, it's finding how special you are. And then you can, everything around you becomes more special. There'll be challenges, of course, but um, I'm only here to point the way. And I'm happy to help you if that's the case. Juliet said, do you think men look for looks mainly? I think women tend to look at a man as a whole and women go for personality more. Having said that, I do feel that men at the moment, though with all that's happened recently, do you, I do feel for men. Yeah. Okay. There are many different levels of consciousness and I think ultimately on the invisible plane, on the instinctive level, men have, um, there's a chemistry that happens that stimulates them that they're looking for. I think our culture has made us identify with the outward looks and women go far to um, succumb to that as well. And um, between you all and me, there was a time that when Dave and I were together in the middle of our marriage on tour, the women were ruthless for vibing him. And what women will do is they'll compare in this competitive world that we're in, the woman that might be in the way, and they would psychically send terrible thoughts to me. And lovey dovey, amazing, I'm the queen, so and so, princess, whatever, I'm the one you should have. And you know what I did? Because I was graced with um, such beauty, I built on that. I took advantage of it. And they stopped because in their comparison, they'd look at me and think, wow, she's beyond what I could be. And they'd stop. So it helped me a lot. And then there came a time that I had to realize that I'm not just the looks, I'm not just the clothes. And so I went into just jeans and cut my hair off and poor David, I don't know, <laughs> my revolutionary spirit. But then it came a point that I went, okay, I want my blonde hair. I want it long. I want the curls. I, w I love dressing up. I'm going to do that. But there are days that I don't have to put the makeup on to feel the beauty of who I am. So it's um it's an interesting journey being a woman as I imagine it would be for the man. But when either the woman or the man is balanced, wow, humanity is awesome. Just awesome. <laughs> and I wanna go out and start hugging again. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Anyway, we have to learn to value being on Zoom or the internet. <laughs> Lori says that um she looks at the shoes. If he's wearing white tennis shoes outside a gym setting, we have absolutely nothing in common. <laughs> well, I love the white plimsolls because I'm American and we're big on wearing plimsolls. So it just goes to show, it depends on your culture. Verpi saying, my comment was from a victim's perspective. Sorry if it a tough subject to discuss on here. Oh, I didn't think it was tough. 
I love sharing different perspectives and us working through it. Karen says, I wish that our Western culture would teach young people about the higher aspects of male and female relationship. Yep, we also have to live it so that they feel that there's a, a truth to it. We're getting further and further away from that reality in some ways. But little by little, we do it in our posts, but most of all, you have to energize you, find that balance within who you are. <laughs> Let me have a look. See. Yeah. <laughs> Jealousy, Laurie, generally is about self-judgment and non-acceptance of who you are. And it's interesting that throughout my life, and particularly the more that I started to be happy with who I am, sometimes when I'd walk down the street, when we were walking down the street, watching the woman's reactions. And I could tell which ones um, didn't believe in themselves. And this whole comparison thing, it's one of the challenges if you're a beautiful woman in our culture, I have to say. And there was a time that I could feel early on, I was glad to have the wedding ring so that when I walked down the street or went into anywhere, the men would all sort of psychically want to, um, they were attracted and wanted to possess me. That really flipped me out. I, I just didn't know how to do it. And um, I suppose we have um, different things we have to deal with, depending on what God's given to us to work through. I have to tell you this one other story. There's a, I went to a healing workshop over a weekend. And um, I'm pulling a blank of who it was. Well, I'll come back. Anyway, we had, most people had checked in and we were waiting for it to begin when the facilitator said, Ginger Gilmore, and I got up. She says, could you come to the table, please? And I got down there and there was a woman there that was not too beautiful. Had, um, I think she might have been burned or she was deformed in some way. She says, I'd like to introduce you to another Ginger Gilmore. And what was really interesting is that she was born on the same day as me. It's, it, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And to top it off, we sat opposite each other through the workshop. And she had to work through dealing with her jealousy, low self-worth, looking at me. And I had to get used to love someone that had, was deformed. It was quite a weekend, especially since we had the same name and the same birth date. And sometimes thinking about it, I wonder, was that a walk-in angel so that I could learn something? Maybe she didn't really exist. Maybe it was um, a cosmic plant. <laughs> so everybody has their challenges and what gets you through them is having a wonderful quest a vision
to do with the highest beauty of what we are. <laughs> Canon says rock guards usually rock guard gods usually had gorgeous wives. Yeah. Yeah. Stefan says it does feel strange to have not even touched anyone in over a year. I'm sure I'm not the only person. That is so true, Stefan. It's like the longer this goes on, I. It's weird. <laughs> but the longer it goes on, I'm. Um, I'm in a creative spurt right now. It seemed I don't know what happened, but something went. <laughs> and um, this little gold, which the arm. That, um, that little gold painting is one of the new ones being born. Yeah. So Erica was saying that it was meant to be for us to, to have cross paths. Well, I have something interesting, and I almost put it in my book, but I decided not to, that... A girlfriend of mine in, when was it, probably 2001 or so, said to me, I've got this really great astrologer. I really want, you really should have your chart done. And I said, well, I really, I've done that in the past, in the 60s. And the thing is, is that I don't want to be one of those people that doesn't go out because the stars aren't right or... You do go out because the stars are right. I just want to trust the hints that come to me day in and day out and see if I could follow that and and be me in what runs my life. And yes, they're good tools. Yeah. And it's... um. Anyway, she insisted so much that she said, I'll pay for it. But please get it done. So I said, okay. So I did it. Our, my chart was off the grid for this astrologer. And he had said, you know, um, if you don't know exactly when you were born at the time of it, I can figure it out by asking you lots of questions. So he got me through a lot of questions. He says, I've got two more for you. And then I'll definitely know. He says, do you know, do you remember anything that happened on the 28th of October, 1971? <laughs> I went, uh, yeah, I think I could tell you exactly every minute of the day. That... He says, really? What? And I said, that's the day that David and I first met. And the second question is, do you remember what happened on the 5th of November that same year? I said, yes. <laughs> it was the day that I left my shops, my lead role in an act, in a film, um, my house, my dog, and went off with David on tour. So he was completely amazed that I had remembered that and he's done a chart for me and he said the way that your all your chart is David could not help but fall in love with you and he said I, in a way I'd really love to know what David's is so um, it was our destiny yeah Juliet was saying, re what I was saying about how those women were around David. Firstly, you coped with that amazingly. It reminded me of a very good looking man who I worked with in my 20s. 
he and his friend, both single, would put on fake wedding rings when then went out as they said it attracted more women. Really? Okay. <laughs> See, all these stories of what we have to cope with are really more to do with uh, the um, outside aspects of our modern world. And um, it's our challenge now for many of us to, who are awakening to find another balance within ourselves out inside and then integrate it with the outside. That will be quite a shift, I have to say. Um, it's all a process. Erica, astrology helps me make, where are you? You disappeared. Astrology helps me make more sense of people, but it doesn't dictate my life or relationships. It's really cool though to see someone's chart and think that sounds exactly like them. Yep. I mean, didn't the Egyptians use astrology in a more um, constructive, helpful way. Um, Verpi, responding to Erica. I agree. I'm an agnostic and don't believe in what hasn't been proved, but my experiences have proved that there is something strangely accurate about astrological charts. There sure is in mine, and it's scarily accurate, but not scarily it just makes sense. Yeah. There was um, a, a doctor called Dr. Sharma that helped me through a lot and my children. He's no longer with us, but in the early days of going to him, he had me come. <laughs> Of what I had to do sometimes. I had to meet him at seven in the morning and we read through this book about astrology and from there he was from India and also a esotericist and from the point of view of his life also was a follower of Ramana Maharishi um, they felt that the star sign that you knew, that most Western people knew, you already know that. But it's all the other qualities that we have to integrate and work with to be a whole human being. So that was the viewpoint of how he used astrology in his um, spiritual practice. Food for thought it was. And Alice Bailey also leads you the same direction, that it's to be whole, is to integrate all of those. And if you come to the color of thought, when we talked about white, white is all colors. So there is an aspect within each of us that is whole and holds all qualities. And who we are that's visible, or what color we're seeing, like if you take red, it's a reflection, it light, it, it's a reflection of the light of that color. But all the other colors are behind it. But we don't think about that because the Western world particularly is working on a very superficial level of interpretation on the physical plane as opposed to include all the invisible aspects of who we are and I didn't understand it all for a long time but I, I see it I still working on achieving it some days I know the wholeness of who I am and then the little ch -ch 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 comes in
Hang on a minute. I'm talking to myself and I'm missing some of your wonderful comments. Angela says, re-wedding ring. My ex-husband used to take his off when going out. He now regrets. Just spoke to him half an hour ago about this. <laughs> it was home with our, he would, I was home with our babies. Grateful we can talk about this stuff still. Well done, Angela. Not all relationships are that progressive. Yep, white is actually love and purification and a reflection of everything, but also a protection. As I said in the color of thought of the white was that the many spiritual masters wear white because they are aligned within. Their radiance is totally balanced as we were talking about earlier. And just to be in a room, they radiate. They wear the white so that it holds all colors and represents and symbolically touches you. It helps enhance this wholeness of who we are. But it also reflects things so that it's almost like their boundary at the same time. They know that their energy is piercing through the white, but also it reflects. So therefore they can hold this harmony within a balance. There was a time I was um, just creating in white. All my sculptures, all my panels, everything was in white. That's what came to me. And then a, a friend said, um, Maybe I should add some color in there in order for the ordinary human being to see it. Because it, they might just pass by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to let you know that um, on Fridays now, I'm going to do something called Being Creative, which is about me painting from the beginning a piece of artwork that you can watch what I'm doing and see how it develops. I'll be talking a bit through it with as things come to me about what I've learned. Um, about color, about intention as an artist, about um, techniques that empower things. So um, I hope for you to tune into that. My color of thought now is going to switch over slowly to being creative live because um, to go further with it I really need to be individually involved with you closer and doing a group session isn't quite doesn't feel like we can go deeper in that way so I thought well let's change it to watching me painting and see what happens. Verpi, what time will it be on Friday? Um, we were thinking it would be about 11.30 English time. Hmm. Hi, Mark. I hope everything is well, it's fine to be reflective. It's um, when we have those moments, it's like you take a breath and 
value life so I know you, I feel your heart and the passages of time Juliet says that talking about struggling with change my son is struggling with being back at school He's been suffering with anxiety these last two weeks and we've talked a lot. He's only 14, looks 17, and that little boy is still within him. I'm getting him some help. He's surrounded by love and I need to get him through this. My granddaughter is 14 and she was going through something panicking about going back to school. This COVID thing is really been a challenge for everyone of all age groups and it would seem that most of the children should have help and somehow oh you're back i thought i lost you <laughs> it's it's good like sian was saying it will be am verbi so I hope you can tune in. <laughs> there will be, there are some, um, there are two of them that I did already that's on my Be Creative page. You could go back and have a watch. And then um, I'll show you. This is the second in the series. I hope you can see it that we're working on. You'll watch it grow. Hang on. I have to wait for the time delay for you to see this. Here we go. We're almost there. Okay. So they're, they're basically a theme about the feminine quality and the masculine quality that um, these pieces are being made according to the color theory that we were discussing. And this one's about indigo. And the other one was gold, which I haven't really talked about. And that will be this Friday at seven in the evening for one of the last color thoughts as we progress into another mode. Thank you, Erpi. There's a lot of, um, I'm, <laughs> there's a lot to be working on, on it and I see it and I know what has to be done, but the work has to be done. So I, um, yeah. There's a lot of goddess in us all. So, oh no. Laurie, what time is 11 British time in Texas? If I remember when Matthew was there, five hours ahead beginning next week. Yeah, time's changed again. Mm. So maybe I have to make it in the afternoon. What do you think? Five o'clock. What? You think five o'clock UK time's good or five o'clock in Texas if it's 11? Hmm. Um, my phone's off, so I can't verify this. Juliet, wait until you see it changing. <laughs> There's some lovely surprises coming in, and I really look forward to getting to that point. I can't push it. All right. Um, I'd have to ponder this, what time we should do it. Hmm. It might be that I could um, 
pre-record it, record it while I'm doing it and then post it later. Would that work better? It's five in Texas when it is 11 in the UK. Okay. I will talk to my PR person and my son who lived in Texas, as you know, I used to. Um, I'll come up with some time. We'll be putting out an announcement about it. But they will be also recorded. Thank you. What, Laurie, you get up at 5.15 in the morning. It's a good time to meditate, actually. Well, Verpi, they're going to, some of them will be pre-recorded because of this time aspect and, but there'll be you watching me live, um, probably without the ability to comment, but you could send me messages if you have any questions. Okay, lovely people. I will come up with a time, but I think because of the international aspect of you all, we might have to um, post them at a certain time of the day so that you know it will be there. Or I will do it live at that point. Anyway, it's that time again. <laughs> okay, so Isabel, you would prefer me to be live, live, okay. It is. I go for a nice walk in the pre... Hi, Andy. <laughs> Texas is five hours behind, right? Love to you all. And it's time for me to go. And, um... Have a cup of tea. Thank you for coming. And um, be well. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how quick these sessions go, don't they? But thank you. Thank you. And thank you.